let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby, lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hello, horror hounds, and welcome to Now Slain, an It Slays podcast production where we review the latest and greatest in the world of horror. I'm your humble host, Rowan. It's your resident dirtbag, Jill. And we are looking at The Nun 2, which was released in theaters September 8th, 2023. So to start off, uh, I figured I'd ask you the question, Jill. Are you big into the Conjuring universe and were you looking forward to... To the nun too, or yeah, what what's uh, what's your experience? I guess with this franchise and the anticipation level of everything. Yeah, I've got um kind of a detailed answer for this. So uh, I've actually not seen the first nun film because I don't fuck with that type of horror. I don't do that religious possession exorcism whatever type of stuff anything paranormal too spooky for me and i won't sleep so um it's amazing that i've watched most of the conjuring universe i think the only one i haven't seen besides the nun is la llorona so i think i've seen everything else and i'm you know i'm pretty decent fan of uh the conjuring universe i like it it scares the shit out of me and then i can't sleep for a little bit but i like it and i like vera farmiga and really happy to see her sister who i love uh, Taisa for me got in this one, so I was excited to see that. Yeah, and I, I'm kind of like the opposite. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is kind of one of those uh, insidious issues where I had never seen any of these when they came out. Um, they they never overly interested me. I I do like kind of the genre of you know like haunted houses uh you know i i've gone on record on the main show saying that i really enjoy you know like the exorcist possession movies as someone that's like very not religious i actually really do like like religious iconography and and that kind of feel i guess even though i can't relate to it but i have seen most of the conjuring i did kind of take it upon myself like i went out i bought everything and i was like i'm gonna see everything has to offer so i think i've seen all the conjurings I've only seen one of the uh, i saw the first annabelle movie they're terrifying <laughs> And I did see The Curse of La Lorna. Yeah. And I actually watched the first nun the morning before going to see this film. Oh, boy. I own The Nun. I had never watched it. Uh, and I don't know if that, like, signifies what I kind of thought about this franchise, which is... I'm just not a really big fan. I think especially where these are definitely, like, in the kind of, like, PG-13 range... Most of these films, uh, they just never really did it for me. Um, I think The Conjuring is probably like the stronger entries into these. But even The Conjuring, like there's like 80 million better haunted house movies that I would watch probably before I'd like go back and revisit uh, The Conjuring. Sounds like you have a movie buying problem. (laughs) Maybe if you're not watching them, you're like yeah. me. I bet I I buy books and don't read them. I have I have the same thing because I also have hundreds of books I buy and I never read them. So my wife would agree with you. Expensive. <laughs> and before we get into it, let's get into the trailer, and we'll be back with the synopsis and the spoiler-free section. Whatever you do, whatever you hear. I saw The Nun. Two, only in theaters September 8th. The Nun 2 is directed by Michael Chaves and written by Ian B. Goldberg, Akila Cooper, and Richard Niang. And the synopsis is as follows. The greatest evil in the Conjuring universe. Four years after the events at the Abbey of St. Carta, 
Sister Irene returns once again and comes face to face with the demonic force Valak the Nun. So here at Now Slain, we like to start off with spoiler-free thoughts. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, you can continue to listen, and we are going to do our very best not to try to spoil anything for you. Uh, Jill, what are some of your initial thoughts on the nun too. So you did talk about like uh, religious stuff and watching this, it kind of reminded me of like the horror version of the Da Vinci Code, which is <laughs> like, I don't know, a movie I really liked back in the day. Um, So, you know, like you, I'm not religious, but I do like to watch those, you know, types of movies. Um, so that was interesting. I'll talk more about that later. Parts of it were predictable, uh, especially the ending for me. But um, overall, like I didn't have a terrible time like I did for uh, the last voyage of the Demeter. <laughs> I wasn't bored. Um, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either it was just pretty mid i guess also i think you know valak as in the in the nun body looks really good they do kind of overdo it (laughs) by showing the nun all the time like there's so much screen time to the point where it gets less scary um so maybe they could do away with some of that i know the glowing eyes are like part of the lore but they're a little bit cheesy and sometimes the nun's teeth were like super CGI and I was like, that looks pretty cheap. But other than that, um, she looked great. Bonnie Aarons uh, always does a good job. Uh, even though I haven't seen the first one, um, I know that she does a decent job. And um, what else? I like that Storm Reed was in the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. I know her from mostly Euphoria and... Uh, I like her acting, so it was nice to see her in there. And, um, yeah, there was lots of hidden stuff. Uh, like, not really hidden, because it's kind of in plain sight. Like, you know, the figure of the nun is in the background, in the shadows. But you can really see it, so that kind of made it more cheap for me as well. So it could have been spookier that way. What about you? Like I kind of said, uh... You know, when we were talking about the whole universe, I I did watch this like, you know, only like eight hours before going to see uh, the second one. I, I saw the first one and the first one I was like really not into i i think it's kind of the the first one is uh like universally just like looked at is pretty bad uh mm-hmm. you know and this is what this is one of those franchises that like you know i respect to uh everybody making money because like the first nun made like a shit ton of money even though it seemed that no one really liked it but there's obviously an audience for it uh that enjoy you know just this universe of the conjuring yeah but you know i found with the first one uh like i had a i had a lot of problems where uh, there was like a lot of story beats or scenes that were like you're like oh shit like i know what movie they're ripping off except the other movie does it way better mm-hmm. and it just seemed like this kind of continued as the same thing like there was a lot of beats that i'm like oh this has been done way better in other movies And not necessarily this time around, like, horror movies. Like you said, like, there's a lot of, like, kind of thriller, like, uh, like, treasure hunting vibes in this. So you do get that kind of, like, Da Vinci Code, like... I don't know, like, yeah, Da Vinci Code, like, National Treasure, (laughs) like, Indiana Jones feel, like, you you know, you have this, like, cast of characters that are, like, kind of trying to find, like, some sort of sacred object or whatever, and unfortunately, you know, I think if this was more marketed as, like, a a thriller fantasy or something, I would have been, like, you know, less angry at it Mm -hmm. because as a horror movie i just think it didn't work like whatsoever there wasn't anything like super scary about it a real issue i find you know in this universe and any other you know movies that i think usually come at you at like this kind of lower like pg 14 rating is like even the jump scare stuff is 
I just felt like every time I heard a noise, I could pretty much be like, all right, like eight seconds. I can just count out eight seconds and something's going to jump out at the screen. But it seemed like it was just the exact amount of time every time. And it was just like so formulaic and like, all right, like this is where we're putting the jump scares and the jump scares in this weren't even that good. I found like there was nothing to me that I was like, Oh, like even gave me like a little (laughs) jump where, Oh man, I felt, you know, even like, uh, watching earlier this year like when we watched insidious the red door like there was stuff there even though i didn't really like that movie that i was like oh these jump there was some effective jump scares in that where this one i was just kind of like uh these are like pretty weak jump scares and i found they they really read the jump scares like ahead of time so Mm -hmm. there was a lot like there was a lot of stuff where you would already see stuff like moving in the background so it it was like okay well i already know it's gonna come from here and i i was just like kind of you know kind of disappointed in that fact so i feel like it was really hard to get my like mind into this movie because the first one even though like i said i think the first one is abhorrent like it's not good at all but Mm -hmm. it was like an attempt at a horror movie where i just didn't feel like this was at all when we got to like the third and final act all i could think about and i don't really know why is i was just like i feel like i'm watching like fucking harry potter or something like (laughs) you know i just i felt like i was watching a movie about like i don't know like magic and wizards and like shit which then she code yeah like it was just like but Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. It, it was just like, like you said, like, I think where they show so much of the nun, it's it just like the CG. You're like, yeah, it's like a CGI, mon- you know, monster. And at the end, it's like, it's just kind of like a, a nun genie or something. Like, it's like... It's not really, like, the nun doesn't look scary. It's just kind of this huge thing in a room. And, you know, we're trying to fight it with, like, you know, pretend Jesus magic or something. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, like, this to me is like a, this has all the beats of, like, a a kid's, like, action movie and not a horror movie. Yeah, I got to compare it to, to a couple of things. The first thing is, like, when there's always, you know, shadows and, and figures years in the background i always compared that to hereditary because i feel like hereditary like did it best and that scared the absolute bejesus out of me um and this one i was like you see you see this coming like it's clearly there it's huge it's very like clear contrast you can see it um there was one jump scare that like really got me and and the girl sitting in front of me like every jump scare got her but yeah apart from that i agree about the jump scares the other thing is that i think in you know some of the other conjuring movies like the monsters were scarier uh like annabelle creation Uh, i literally screamed in that theater because (laughs) i was so scared at one point uh and this is supposed to be like the big baddie like this is the most evil creature in the whole Conjuring universe. This is Valak and kind of lost that scariness, that mysteriousness by it being shown so much, making it so obvious and the terrible CGI. Um, So that's that's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, and I, I guess I'd touch on, like, I also was pretty, uh, you know, I was pretty excited to see, like, Storm Reed uh, appear in this one. Mm-hmm. I kind of, I feel like maybe I was a little bit of the opposite of you. I, I didn't think she was very good in this, which was a shame. <laughs> I thought the character was, like, really out of place. I I I just, like, the writing, I felt, just, like, wasn't really up to par, and it wasn't great. I think she was just, like, kind of a foil character for Sister Irene, you know what I mean? Like, very bland to, like, let her shine. (laughs) Yeah, well, and I I know after I saw this, I I messaged Colton, and I'm like, oh my god, I think they're trying to rip off our favorite movie of the year, uh, The Pope's Exorcist. Because I was like, they're obviously, you know, they're definitely trying to set this up, you know, like any of this Conjuring stuff so they can just pump out sequels. Yeah. And that's where I was like, this is literally just the Pope's Exorcist, where it's like this kind of like horror, but kind of silly 
action where it's just like, oh, we're like demon fighters now, and we're just gonna like, we're basically like hitmen for the Vatican, like fighting demons. Yeah, that's kind of my issue with the whole Nun series in general, is that um, you know, they um, I forget which Conjuring movie where they like showed this, the Nun picture at the I think that was the second one was the second I feel. one so they like really hyped that up and it was like really scary at the time i was like oh shit and then they put out the first nun movie and like you said uh didn't do well and then they continue to put them out and it's just like maybe maybe you shouldn't <laughs> i don't know i was gonna say too like uh taisa formiga i like i, th- I thought she was good mm-hmm. i mean definitely it holds the first one together Holds this one together. I'm not Jonas Bluckett. Like I, I, I don't really understand it. I like. I think he's fine, but uh, you know, he wasn't great in the first one. In the first one, he just like continuously made the same joke about being French Canadian, and I, I, luckily they kind of dropped that joke in this one. Jesus, didn't know that. <laughs> but I felt like with these characters, and, and I'll get more deeply into it why uh, later on, although I thought it was interesting that this one, especially compared to the first one, kind of uh, started to create stakes, because we started to, like, we did have, like, some deaths that, like, maybe you would wouldn't necessarily think they would do uh you know like there's definitely like children get hurt all this kind of stuff like so you're like oh, okay like they're creating you know something something here but i felt that overall like there just didn't feel like there was any real stakes in this movie yeah i feel like this is a movie that like um you know adolescent girls watch at a sleepover like i would have watched back when i was you know a preteen, and we would have been like oh my god it's so scary you know this is the kind of that that's probably <laughs> like the perfect audience i'm sure their audience isn't like a uh mid-30s man <laughs> so i understand that that's all i had for the uh spoiler free notes for me did you have any other ones no let's get into it well so i guess uh the last question to ask in this section is would you recommend this for people to go see Ooh, that is a loaded question so like i said it's pretty mid if you've seen the you know all the conjuring movies you've seen the first nun um i did go with anthony from um he just did an episode with us um on the show um, and he said he liked it better than the first one, so take that as you will. But... That seems to be the general consensus. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, if you like those movies, maybe, you know, if you're a completionist, watch it. If you're looking for just something to go watch, go watch it. Otherwise, maybe don't go watch it. Um, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a complete waste of time. Like I said, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't good either. So, like, I don't know, maybe go see it if you want to, I guess. I'm on the boat of, uh, like, I, I don't think I would recommend this to see in the theater. I did not have a good time. And, and like I said to you, uh, yeah, it seems like I'm kind of in the minority of this. this. This seems to be getting positive positively reviewed like by most where uh, just most reviewed not on letterbox well i mean we're <laughs> a, we're a different crowd on letterbox but it seems okay. it, it seems the general public is kind of like well it's better than the first one and like it seems to be like a, a mid movie which is an improvement to the first one like i said i wasn't in the vibe it did kind of take me off as I said before, where, like, I just didn't really feel like the horror in this horror movie, mm-hmm. which is kind of a shame. Does me saying I don't recommend going and seeing it going to do anything? Probably not. It's a Conjuring Universe movie. I'm sure this is going to make out like gangbusters. It's going to make a shit ton of money. The first one made a shit ton of money. They'll probably make, like, eight more of these movies. The Nun 3 coming up. Yeah, which... You know, uh, more power to these guys. Uh, Michael Chaves, uh, you know, this is his third Conjuring movie. So, obviously, they're 
are enjoying having him at the helm of these. I kind of wish uh, James Wan came back for these and uh, did something even somewhat it's not decent. The same. But yeah, it's so I wouldn't yeah. recommend it. Maybe to me, I'd wait till this comes to streaming or something. I, you know, I'm sure this is gonna kill on streaming. Also, people yeah. will watch it. It's a streaming movie. I feel. Uh so we are gonna get into our spoiler section. So if you've made it this far and you haven't seen The Nun 2, this is the part where you can stop and go see The Nun and then come back and listen to our spoiler thoughts on it. Or I don't know, if you decide, you know what, I'm going to take their advice and I just don't really care and I want to hear the spoiler thoughts, continue on at your own risk. So let's cut on in to the spoiler section. So Jill... We'll start with you. What are some of your spoiler thoughts on this film? Okay. Um. So one of the scenes that I actually really liked, which was very Da Vinci Code, was when they go into that, like, room, whatever the fuck it's supposed to be, and the stained glass with, uh, you know, we got Black Phillip, and then, uh, then they do that thing where they're like, okay, you gotta look at it until it turns red, and they just leave her there. Which is yeah. terrible, but um, I just really like I don't know the the light shining through it. Like like you said, it's very fantasy. Like that's something I would read in one of my fantasy. And books. the light shines like where something ha- like you find. Oh something. yeah, yes, in the floorboards. Yeah, which is a device they used in the first one. Is where, it? Yes, in the first one, they're in a room, and you know, like a light shines on a statue. The statue then shoots the light to like a keyhole where you have to put a key. So oh, yeah. Yeah, this seems super to be fantasy. A super fantasy. Yeah, so I really like that part. You know how much I love me and my Black Philip. Um, so you know when he came to life, I was like, that's cool. I guess they could have done that. <laughs> they could have executed that a bit better. Uh, but I also enjoyed him chasing. You know all the the students, all the kids, and then you have Storm Reed trying to like take care of them or whatever and one of my favorite scenes was uh you know when they're hiding from him and uh there's that vent and you know the dead like nun yeah teacher she's not a nun she's a teacher sorry on the other side and she's like you know all reanimated and like evil and possessed and it looked pretty decent and you know she's gonna pull her through the vent and it happens after probably eight seconds, like you said. And, uh, you know, that was probably one of my favorite scenes because, you know, they heard a kid, like you said. So we're, yeah. we're getting somewhere past PG. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of interesting because similar to you, I actually probably my one of my favorite parts of this film was kind of the like the, the goat man beast coming alive. Like, yeah. even though, you know, obviously this is probably... I, I doubt this was practical. I'm imagining it's probably some sort of CGI creation. They were kind of smart enough that he was pretty, like, darkly lit, so you couldn't really mm-hmm. tell if it was a one or the other or a mix. But I thought he was pretty cool. I was like, oh, this is, like, kind of a cool monster that, like, I haven't really ever seen. Like, usually it's a goat or it's a, a guy. Like, it's not... I've never mm-hmm. seen this, like, mix of this, like, werewolf-type goat beast. And I was like, yeah, right. I can I can get it into this and you know sadly i kind of you know i was kind of hoping that we'd spend some more time of this thing chasing people around where it's like oh we kind of get that creature for like two minutes and then we're kind of done with that yeah where it you know it's kind of the opposite where <laughs> you know the nun we're we're getting all these like not you know typical of this franchise of like you know the nun just like hanging out in the shadows and we see it like you know we see the nun peek its head out of the shadows but like they use that gimmick like five times in this movie more than five times oh i'm just like you you guys have been using this <laughs> since you know the nun came into the conjuring universe like can we do something else with the nun which i guess they did at the end and then i didn't like it because we were getting genie nun then but yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I, you know, probably the me, which I think is going to become the iconic scene of this movie, which is a shame because it's actually a pretty good scene, but it was in the trailers. So 
which is the magazine stand where we have all the magazines flip and it's like goes on and on. And it you like at first, you know, I can't say I didn't know it wasn't going to be the nun at the end of the day, but I wasn't sure what they were doing to start with. Like took a long time. It took a long time, but I thought I was like, this is very cool. I don't know why, but it seemed very it to me, like very the okay. new, the new variation of it. I was like, this kind of seems like it's out of that universe. It does, but in keeping with, you know, James Wan in like Insidious. Remember when we saw, was it the red door with like the window? Yeah. Was that that movie? And like the papers on the wall or whatever? Yes, or the window? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That reminded me of that, but it went on for like a really long time. And I was like, it's obviously going to turn to the nun, but like when, when though? But yeah, it was cool. I thought that was the best shot scene. It looked the best out of everything else in the movie. And I was like, this is, you know, if the, even though I, you know, I wasn't jumping, I wasn't like, ah, but like <laughs> to me, I was like, if the scares and stuff were of this kind of quality and stature like i probably would have liked this way better because i was like oh this is like a cool visual this isn't really something i've ever seen Mm -hmm. i thought it was pretty tense it was pretty suspenseful more so than anything else in this movie but like i said sadly they they showed this scene in one of the trailers so it was kind of like oh well i already know it's gonna be the nun so Mm -hmm. thanks for ruining that one guys (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, I do want to talk about, because I did talk about the stakes not feeling there, which it just, to me, you know, uh, so the original cast of the first one of Irene and uh, whatever, what was the guy's name? Uh, Maurice. Uh <laughs> Which, of course, all I could think about was you guys just taunting me uh, endlessly for uh, Queen of the Damned. Oh, Marius. Marius. So, yeah. I should call this guy Marius, too. <laughs> Stop. But yeah, uh, Maurice and Sister Irene uh, are returning. Uh, I forget the father, whatever character from the first one, not returning. And instead of, you know, we get the generic, like, oh, he died. So he's not in this movie, uh, which they kind of explain to you right away. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I just, you know, at the end of this movie, none of the, I didn't ever feel like any, none, none. Yeah. (laughs) I just didn't feel like any of these characters were like in immediate danger. And I was right to think that we don't kill off any main character. No. There's like Maurice lives. I because to me, I probably would have came out feeling a little better if Maurice didn't live. And at least then there's this stake built that, like, oh shit, this guy that we've been with since the first movie, like, didn't make it. But no, yeah. it's like, no, we need like 30 spinoffs of this. So we're just gonna like kick this down the road and he's perfectly True. fine. He's perfectly okay. That made it less scary in addition to the nun being in the background a lot of the times and not doing anything. Thing yeah, yeah, to harm anyone, so yeah, and it, it was stuff like, uh, you know, like they tried to kind of build up Maurice more with like this love story with Marcella. And I actually really liked uh, Anna Popplewell that played Marcella, like, I thought she was great, she was like one of the highlights of this. Yeah. And you know, they build like this love story, but it wasn't anything I guess I was really interested in. I just was like, this isn't going to have any consequence. Like, because I already could feel it by the time we're halfway through this movie. I'm like, all right, we're kind of in this action adventure thing. And I just knew in my heart, I'm like, we're going to, you know, they're going to leave this place. This love isn't going to be built. Because they're going to have to go fight demons somewhere else and get recruited. And, you know, they pretty much lay it out in this film that they're like, oh, okay, you're now like the Vatican. We're sending you to all any issue we ever have uh, mm-hmm. with demons now and possessions. Yeah, unfortunately, I just, I, <laughs> I, I it just, yeah, it wasn't for me. Didn't dog. get your love story. So sad. I was trying to think if they're. Like I said, I didn't have a lot, uh, a lot of notes on this because if you couldn't tell, I didn't have that great of a time. I will say another thing that kind of bugged me. I I wasn't huge on the score of this because I did, I did feel the score also was very kind of action, adventure, fantasy. Like I didn't think it was really a a strong suit of the horror. You know, this is unfortunately uh, Michael Chav's 
third movie in this, and I think this is kind of his, like, third flop, in my opinion. I wasn't a big fan of The Devil Made Me Do It. The, I thought The Third mm. Conjuring was definitely the weakest. I think it's kind of also universally thought that La Lorna was terrible, which, yeah, like, it wasn't, that also wasn't very good. So, I, like, I just feel bad, because, I like, I don't know what it is, because, like, these are competently made. It's, like, it's not like I'm watching a Tubi movie. Like, they mm-hmm. look like they have a budget. But I'm just, like, I don't know, man. Like, maybe you should be doing something other than horror. Because, like, I just, I, I don't know if it's, if this is it. I don't know if this is it for you, ma'am. It is, and it's very unfortunate to, like, kind of take down a franchise that, you know, everything else with James Wan is, like, really good in my opinion and then you have this thing that kind of like leans away from that and like you said the horror yeah i guess you could say it's none fortunate (laughs) oh so now i guess the most like spoilery thing we can really talk about now i'm I'm curious because i know i was the only one by accident you didn't happen to see the uh mid credit scene did you i'm pissed that i stayed for that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because I was like, we already got this. We already we already know this. Why why did we stay for that? Yeah, I didn't uh <laughs> I didn't know what was going on there. Uh I was kind of like, uh, okay. I was only there. I was like on Letterbox as soon as it was done cuz I was like I want, I'm interested in what other people are saying about this. So I was like yeah. I just kind of was sitting in my seat like everyone had already started to leave and I was like, "All right, I'm getting ready to leave." And then they cut into the scene where uh yeah, so the scene is we have Ed and Lorraine. Lauren, they're like in their uh, their lecture about you know possession and all that stuff. And then we're getting the call back to the first Conjuring. Yeah. I can't think of the character's name, but we have the mom of the family from the first one, right? Yes. I think so. Yeah, she's yeah. from the first one, and she's, like, in the audience uh-huh. of this thing. And I was just like, you know, as I felt throughout this whole movie, I was like, yeah, we've done it. Like, the Conjuring is the MCU of horror movies now that, like... Now we're just going to sit in these movies and watch like post credit scenes so they can tease what's coming next in this universe. But they're just they're just like tying up what's already been done, though. So I don't I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do with that. Like, I don't really understand. Yeah, I mean, I figure it's more so they were just like, hey, everyone likes Patrick Wilson. And <laughs> so they were like, why? How can we get uh, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga in here? Yeah. And I mean, you know what? Congratulations. The Farmiga sisters just eating. Carrying and eating. Yeah, like just make that money. Make that money. I'm glad you're just milk this franchise. Because not, a- not everybody fun. gets a franchise like this. And Mm -hmm. sisters don't usually get to share a franchise like this. Yeah, it's really cute. And they both have their other franchises. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. And I mean, she, yeah, she, she's got lo- lots of stuff going on. Also, uh, Vera, the mom from Beats Hotel. Yeah, that's her best franchise, I yeah. feel. She's yeah. She's just always killing it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I really had for the notes and the spoiler free. I, I feel there's not much you can spoil no. in this because, I mean, if you've seen one of these movies, well, you've seen them all. I got one thing. Okay. Is, uh, the ending, how they, you know, banish uh valak back to hell uh because early on they talk about you know it's a miracle in faith to um you know for wine to become the blood of christ and that's how they banished whatever demon last time i guess so like when they're in that uh room and then there's these like big casks of wine and they start to like flood it's like it's obvious like that's what they're gonna do to kill the demon And I thought that was just like, I don't know, just really predictable. Yeah, well, and that's, you know, they had to do something a little different. I know you said you didn't see the first one, but in in the Mm -hmm. first one, basically, they they have like a necklace and it's full of the actual blood of Christ. The last remaining bit, uh, we have Sister Irene, like basically like swap, puts it in her mouth and hides it and then spits it on Valak's face. That's fucking metal. (laughs) Which, you know, if we ever review the first one, like, on the main show or something, is a scene completely ripped out of Tales from the Crypt Demon Night. That way, you know, that that was all. Jada Pinkett already did that to Billy Zane much better in that movie. <laughs> Shit. 
So yeah, like a little twist on something they've already done with the blood of Christ. I guess. But I get it, church people. I'm sure they love that shit. Uh, Do you have any other points or are we good to uh, go in the rating this? Uh, No, sir. So if you're new to the rating system, our rating system in Now Slaying is still nay, okay, yay, or slay. Jill, what would you give the nun to? All right. So like I said, I didn't have a terrible time like I did um, on the last Now Slaying I did, which was the voyage of the Demeter. I feel kind of bad saying this, but I'm going to give this one an okay because it was mid. But, you know, didn't have a great time, didn't have a terrible time. Wasn't bored. It was okay and you know i can check it off my list of the conjuring universe movies i've seen so yeah just uh just pretty mediocre how about you rowan this one is a little difficult for me because as colton will tell you i wrote him just just upset I'm like, this fucking piece of trash, like, (laughs) Jesus Christ. And, you know, I'm like, I saw the first one, the first one sucked, and I hate these movies, like, why do I do this, blah, blah, blah. But, like, there, you know, like I said, I did think there were some cool scenes in it, I especially, like, at the more I'm reflecting on it, you know, I I love the magazine scene, I did, I did really like the, the goat beast I thought that was cool. So, like, I, you know, I thought there was, like, very, very bare bones in it. So, I think I'm also going to have to give it an okay, like, a, a super light okay. I totally, I mean, once Colton listens to this, he's going to be like, what the fuck? Because like, for sure... <laughs> For sure, I was like, this is the biggest name movie. I'd rather watch, like, every, any piece of shit other than this. But I guess I can't give it an A simply on the fact that, like, we watched movies for Now Slaying that are far more incompetent than this one. This is competent enough. Like I said many times, I know this just isn't, this just isn't aimed at me. It's not mm-hmm. for me. I, you know, I can't fault it for that. They have their audience. It's built in. Did it improve on the first one? It did. So that one, like, would probably definitely be an A for me. So I have right. to give this, like, a little higher as a, uh-huh. as an okay. So, yeah, if you're not already doing so, uh, you can follow us on any social media at It Slays Podcast. Uh, we're on X, Instagram, Facebook, Slasher, Tumblr, Letterbox Threads. Pretty much, if there is a social media, we're probably on it or we're gonna be on it uh so make sure to follow us and jill do you want to tell them about the patreon sure well first of all shout out to our amazing patrons holly nicholas patrick mark sacrotype joy and carvey if you want to join the ranks of our patrons mosey on over to patreon and choose your pledge level um so you can become part of the shade brigade Um, and get access to the main show 40 hours early, access to our Patreon exclusive show, Stream Screams, where Rowan and I scour the dark depths of Tubi for the scummiest horror movies and review them. Or you can become a horror hound, which is our top tier, and get all those benefits plus a shout out on every episode, as well as the ability to choose a movie uh, for us to review. And, um, You got some spooky jams? Yeah. So go on to Spotify and look up the It Slays podcast horrific playlist. If you have any problems finding it, you can go to any of the social media I mentioned before and go to our link tree link in our bios and click it and it'll take you directly there. We got a link to it. Uh, And on the playlist, we upload scores or licensed music. And that is from movies we reviewed or iconic horror movies or just horror movies we love. And it is that season. It's it's starting to cool off a bit. Not very much. We're having like a heat wave, a hurricane heat wave going on this week here. But uh, it is getting into that time. I know yesterday was uh, the anniversary of Christine, the movie, which, you know, that, that means it's time to pop Christine in. It's time to start popping in horror movies. So that means it's time to start listening to horror music and get in those spooky vibes. So do that and, uh, yeah, get your spooky music on and from there i'm not that well prepared i don't know what is gonna be uh next on now slain i know there is a bunch of stuff coming up so i think i'm probably going to not say anything because i have no idea what will be next (laughs) but you will definitely hear us you know again very soon because we're getting into that uh time that 
horror movies are going to start coming out like every week now. So I'm sure we're going to try to cover as much as we can. So just keep your uh, eyes and ears open and uh, we will be back. So I think that is everything. I am your humble host, Rowan. And it's Jill. And if you keep listening, we'll keep slaying.